in the back, hoping colleagues would remember my name. It's time for the next generation of leadership. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell is stepping down at the end of the year, sending shockwaves that are still reverberating throughout Washington this week. The high-stakes succession battle is already underway. Joining me now with the latest is The Hill's Michael Schnell. Michael, who's replacing McConnell? Yeah, that's the million-dollar question here now, Kevin. Uh, speculation has it that it's going to be one of the three Johns who have always been considered to be successors to Mitch McConnell. That's John Cornyn, uh, John Barrasso, and John Thune. Now, nobody has officially jumped into the race, but the, the expectation is that it will be one of them, all of whom have been close allies of McConnell. Thune, currently the whip. Cornyn, a former whip, and Barrasso, the conference chair. Uh, but remember, McConnell isn't stepping down until November, so there's still plenty of time for this internal jockey for the top job. Something tells me that there's going to be another candidate, other name than John, that enters into the race. But what do I know? Meanwhile, Hunter Biden was testifying on Capitol Hill earlier this week. What have we learned? Yeah, so Hunter Biden uh, was in with the House Oversight and Judiciary Committees for a little under seven hours uh, during that grilling by Republican lawmakers about uh, his father, the president's involvement in his business ventures. Hunter Biden said in his opening statement that his father has never been a part of that, a theme that we have heard from a number of witnesses. But that's not the last time that we're going to see Hunter Biden likely. Uh, House Oversight Committee Chair James Comer coming out of that deposition yesterday and telling reporters that the next step is going to be a public hearing with Hunter Biden. All right, meanwhile, we've got like one day till the shutdown. I know you've got to go stake out a meeting in order to see what exactly is going to, is going to happen with this thing, but they've deal, no deal. Where are we with the shutdown? Yeah, it looks like a shutdown is going to be averted. But for now, Kevin, that's the big caveat. Uh, Congress today, the House today is going to vote on a short term continuing resolution to kick the funding deadlines. The first one to next week, the second one to March 22nd. And top congressional leaders say that they have a deal on six of the 12 appropriations bills, which they will put on the floor and pass next week, which will you know be good to avert the first deadline, that first shutdown. Uh, but the real key thing is going to be that March 22nd deadline when Congress is going to have to sort out some thornier appropriations bills, ones that have to do with the Pentagon, things like that. Uh, that's going to be the real test of Speaker Johnson and his conference. But as of now, a shutdown will be averted. That's the expectation. For like a week, I feel, I feel like we're like in shutdown turbulence for the next couple of weeks. Is that a fair assessment? If you're trying to watch this from a business perspective and understand what all of this means, we're not out of the woods yet in terms of the next couple of no. weeks. We're really entering the thick of things, right? Oh, gosh, no, no, no. Yeah. Kevin, first off, this is the fourth time this Congress that we're up against a shutdown cliff. The fourth time we have to deal with a potential shutdown. Next week, we're going to have to deal with a potential shutdown with that March 8th deadline. And then the week of March 22nd is going to be another shutdown yeah, cliff because bizarre. we are kicking the deadline to there. Seven, this Congress. That's a lot. That's, that's a lot. Trump, meanwhile, also has to pay a lot. $454 million in damages quickly. I, I mean, is this going to start to hurt him and the fundraising and the RNC? apparatus? Well, we'll have to see. Look, every time we have seen an indictment of former President Trump, it hasn't actually hurt his standing in the polls. We saw that with all the indictments last year, we've seen his supporters still be staunch backers of him, despite these different legal entanglements, them saying that the the, uh, the legal proceedings are biased against him. I mean, we'll have to see if this one has anything to do with it. But if, if past his prologue, then no, these legal entanglements will really not hurt his standing in the polls. And just the latest on the, on the Trump court docket brief, I mean, SCOTUS is going to hear the immunity claim, but Illinois just says that they're not going to let Trump be on the ballot. Obviously, the Supreme Court is going to weigh on the Colorado case where he's also been kicked off the ballot. I mean, the dust starting to settle, Chanel. Lastly, yes or no, before I let you go, the White House doctors say that Biden is fit to serve. Is this going to quiet his critics on his health? Yes or no? Not his loudest critic, Kevin. We already see former President Trump saying that he should have taken a cognitive test test at that uh, physical with his doctor. So, uh, no, the chorus of criticism <laughs> I don't think is going to end there. Michael Schnell, in between stakeouts on Capitol Hill, thank you so much, Now, our reporter for Thanks, us Kevin. at The Hill.